What's going on everybody? This is FHRC Brony Ready Controlling Cars and let's just say I just had a lot of fun yesterday. <laughs> this forerunner is now muddy. And um it's not four-wheel drive, but you know I gave what this car deserves. It's off-road heritage. So um anyways, um I'm actually gonna just do a rinse on the exterior of the car, then I'll take it to a wash. Um, but the engine bay certainly needs a rinsing. So what I'm going to do first before I start rinsing it is to uh, put one of these on on it, spray it on first, and then I'll rinse it off. And uh, for some of those who think that, oh, you're not supposed to use water when you put this stuff on, it did say here to not start my engine after I have applied this material until the engine is properly rinsed. So I can technically use some water to um, hose down the, the engine bay. I'm not gonna use a heavy jet stream because otherwise it could damage some electronic components such as like, you know, the alternator and uh, I'm gonna take off the battery, but you know, other electronics like wiring harnesses and stuff. So I'm gonna avoid doing that, but uh, I will be eventually uh, hosing it down with a, a slight shower. Look at that engine bay. <laughs> Good old three point slow is dirty. So, like I said, I'm gonna put some of that that engine degreaser sp uh, spray can, and then I'll do a light uh, shower on this thing, and then you know I'll rinse the exterior of the car, and then I'll take it to a wash first. I'm gonna take off the battery and uh, probably cover that alternator if I can. We'll see. Okay, battery's out. I don't think I need to take out the alternator or at least cover with a plastic bag. I think you just do a light shower on it and then there you go. Actually, before I actually begin the process, let me go ahead and just check if everything's tight. This power steering cap is tight. Uh, let me check my coolant first real quick. Okay, still topped off. That's good. Um, make sure this one's okay as well. Alright. And I have a train all oh, transmission dipstick, so make sure that's pushed in there just fine. Okay. There's the oil. Alright, that's good. And then my brake master cylinder. Okay. All right, looks like we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and put this stuff on the engine and then, and then I'll rinse it off. So while I was spraying uh, some gunk, once I put some gunk in there, uh, this stuff on the engine itself, I just let it, go ahead and let it uh, do its thing. So while at it, I went underneath the car to actually, you know, just Hose, under, hose underneath it. Um, it's not really a necessity on it, but uh, I did actually splash onto a big puddle of mud. No uh, rock band pun intended, but you know, I did uh, I did splash a big puddle of mud. Um, so I decided to just, you know, just rinse it, rinse the underneath of the car. Um, me, me, most people just don't really do that, but you know. I will because it's my car and I'll do whatever I want with it when it comes to car care. So um, I got like maybe another five to ten minutes until this thing is completely um, soaked in because it did say here allow gunk foamy to soak for 10 to 15 minutes. So I believe it's already past five, six minutes already. So I waited for another 10 minutes. So. All right, and then now once I'm done with that, I'll start the engine and let it idle for 15 minutes. Well, since I'm waiting for like at least 10 minutes on letting that gunk foamy spray to uh, do its thing to the engine, I'll just go ahead and uh, just do a little light rinse on the, the truck.
I'm not gonna do the front yet. Oops, I almost forgot. How silly of me. Oh, the battery's disconnected. Oops. Oh well, I'll, I'll wash the other side. I'll do the back in a bit once I put the battery back on. Start clean the top off as well. And there were some water and mud splashed on the top. So just get it in there just as much as we can. Just a little quick reminder, uh, like I said in my previous, previous videos that my 4Runner is not four-wheel drive. Look underneath there. You don't see a CV axle going to the front hub. That's how you can tell that's not four-wheel drive. Another easy way to do it, tell if your 4Runner is not four-wheel drive. This thing right here. Four-wheel drive forerunners have two levers. The transmission lever and the one for the transfer case. It doesn't matter if you have the automatic or the manual transmissions. If it's four-wheel drive forerunner, it will have two levers. Since this one is a two-wheel drive, it only has one. That's so you can easily tell a forerunner uh, that's four-wheel drive and the one that's two-wheel drive. If you own a first gen or a in a second gen, or second gen, usually the um, the fronts, the front hubs are usually uh, manual lockers. So that's another way you can actually tell a four wheel drive four runner, uh, specifically the first and the second generation because I uh, I don't think the third gen and um, later models don't have that. So that's three ways to uh, identify a four wheel drive four runner to a two wheel drive. The third one's actually, the, the manual locking hubs is mainly for the first and second gens. So, um. Like I said, I'm not doing a, a, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. I'm just giving a, like a small little shower. Cause otherwise, if I did that, I would have water on unwanted spaces, like electronic components. I don't want that. So just give it a light shower like that. Let the thing soak in. It's gonna be hard for me to hold this on with one hand, but you know, I'll do the rest off camera. Um, while I go ahead and wait for the engine to, you know, uh, dry up, I just wanna go tell you guys my update on the rear brake drums on this truck. Um, the good news is the car does stop. The bad thing is it still shakes. Um, I, um, figured it out that it's actually the uh, wheel bearing that goes in here um, the, because there's actually a little bit of play coming from here so what I'm going to do in the future is actually get the wheel bearing in the seal from AutoZone or my local parts store and then take it to a shop and and let them do the rest from there because I know there are videos out there that um, did say that you can, you don't need to, you can just like uh, do a method, uh, some other method that I don't really want to do. Uh, but basically what they do on the video is uh, they require that you have a uh, hydraulic press because the bearing is uh, held down in the rest of the, uh, rest of the, uh, axle assembly because uh, once you remove the brake drum and other bolts like and uh, remove the brake line from the brake drum itself you can actually take the whole axle off of the off the vehicle uh, the problem with that is in order to get the bearing out you had to have a hydraulic press 
and unfortunately I don't have that at my house. Now I did think about this by doing the one that most people would do without using the hydraulic press just to bang it on the, uh, a piece of like you know wood or something something like that but I, I don't really like doing that stuff especially on a car this old and you know parts are a little bit hard to find I mean it's a second gen I mean a lot of people will find aftermarket parts on it but I actually personally I would like to have my stuff uh, professionally done so I'll get the parts for it like the wheel bearings and the oil and the seal for it and then I'll take it to a shop and let them do that part um, because I want actually I want the the job done professionally and not do it the the old shit box way that as what we call it in the car community so yeah sometimes you can only do so much okay so it's pretty much uh, done I should say not all the way let me go wipe down this master cylinder real quick But, um, I am not going full Chris Fix on this one because um, that will come in the future because this car will be part of my future Forerunner collection uh, in the long run. But, I actually took the intake manifold, uh, not manifold, but I took the intake out because now the pipe is just right there. Um, so actually, it actually turned out a lot better now, so, which this whole manifold right here, or a plenum, that's what Toyota, the Toyota's term is called, um, this was originally covered up in mud after I did that splash session. Uh, a lot of this part was, was heavily um, muddy, but on that side, that's, over, that's good. Uh, the, the, that's the body itself though, don't worry about that one. Um, but the other side's now better, it's no no heavy heavy mud, uh, I, I'm suspecting, so so I think I did pretty good on it. It's not perfect, but you know, it's it's um, a lot better than, than having it completely muddy. Um, so yeah, I'm really actually am proud, uh, I'm actually really happy uh, of the way it turned out now, so. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the the intake pipe, and then take this car to a wash, um, and then I'll and then I'll call today. She really needs she really needs some TLC, and I'm really happy. I really am happy that I I got to do this. Um, you know it's fun it's fun getting the car dirty. You know every now once in a while, but you know. Be honest with you, I actually have more, um, more fun cleaning it up. So, don't expect a Pablo Picasso from me when it comes to uh, cleaning up the engine bay. Um, that will come in the near future, where I actually get really get to know this car even more. And uh, speaking of which, this already marks a two-year anniversary of owning this car. So, yay! <laughs> All right, here's the. Uh clean engine all fired up no misfires or no other car on the surface now I'm just gonna take give this car one more rinse on the outside and then I'll take it to a wash and then we'll go from there all right I went to the super clean express car wash here in a, at an Arco gas station uh, to clean up my car normally I don't like doing contact uh, washes because this what I mean by contact washes is uh, the stuff where it has those like big brushes that spin and it hits your body, kind of ruins your paint. But uh, keep in mind, I had like mud-ish uh, spot on the truck, so I had to do what I gotta do. But it looks a lot better now. I'm actually um, technically the car is washed, but I actually like to add a little coating of this stuff. Um, car wash and rain repellent and stuff like that so at least I know uh, that's wiped down pretty well because the problem is with the with those uh, automated car washes it doesn't really go all the way through the car that's the only problem I have with it but anyway so uh, yeah it's so far it's doing a pretty good job with uh, rain repellent and waterless car wash and stuff like that 
And after that, I will uh, spray some glass, invisible glass, on on the windows.